Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the QuickBooks.com website. And QuickBooks is a business finance management and organization tool. The company that produces QuickBooks is Intuit. And Intuit also produces the app and software TurboTax. The Intuit company is now separate and distinct from the Quicken software, which is for personal finance. In fact, Quicken has a similar product called Quicken Home and Business made for sole proprietors who are running their business either from home or as a single person or small business. Now, the main product is made to work as a cloud-based service online. And it's designed to meet business owners at every level and then grow with their business. Software is designed to integrate into mobile operation. And in this course, we will work with the basic features of the software and we'll work through the major functions of each kind of transaction. One thing that QuickBooks is designed to prepare you for are the instances where you will need to pay taxes. It'll also help you to work together with your financial professionals, including your accountant. In fact, by working through QuickBooks, you can often find consultation and individuals that will help you to work with making sure that your accounting is done correctly. And when done correctly, QuickBooks will tell you at a glance how your company is doing and whether or not you are making money as well as creating positive cash flow. Attorneys, advisors, and accountants, what QuickBooks is and what it isn't. Now, here are some things to consider before you consider using QuickBooks as the final word on your financial performance. Now, QuickBooks will not magically make you compliant with taxing authorities. It won't necessarily mean that you're accomplishing the financial goals that you want, and it won't necessarily protect you in the case that you are sued. What is most prudent to do before you set up is to speak with the triple A's. The triple A's are an accountant, an attorney, and advisor. This will affect how you set up your QuickBooks software and what it is actually telling you. It may even affect what version you choose to purchase. Advisors. Your financial advisor will help you to determine what your business needs to do for you to help you to attain your financial goals. It will affect how you choose to report your earnings. Now your business advisor will help you to determine the best way to structure your business to attain these goals. They can help you to do so according to the lifestyle you're looking to attain in the future. And once you've had substantive discussion with both business and financial advisors, you will then be ready to speak with an attorney. Attorneys. Your attorney will help you to determine whether or not everything you're doing to meet your financial goals is legal. They will make sure your business entity is structured correctly. They can also help you to protect yourself in the case that you may be sued or that taxing authorities are uncomfortable with what you're doing. They can advise you of potential risks in how you choose to execute your business and financial plans. And once you've had substantive discussions with them, you would then be ready to speak with an accountant. Accountants. Your accountant will help you to make sure that you're doing the correct kind of reporting for the entity you've chosen. They will make sure you don't have surprises at tax time. They can help you to set up your bookkeeping so that all you need to do at tax time is turn over your QuickBooks file. They can make sure that you are tracking both your income and expenses correctly. They can advise you on how to use your cash flow wisely given your tax status. Having this discussion before your initial setup can be beneficial to you so that you start correctly. Remember, every situation is different and could determine how you report your revenue and expense on QuickBooks. What we're going to do first is we're going to look at the plans and pricing. Now there are a number of options that the QuickBooks site will give you from time to time. So for example, one of the things that you can see is that you can start with a 50% off code for three months or you can accept a free trial for 30 days. You're also going to notice two primary ways of being able to use QuickBooks. One, a simplified version, is going to be the freelancer version. The other is going to be for small business, which encompasses everything that the freelancer version does with the exception of being able to track your mileage. What may not be obvious is that there's a desktop version that you can operate, that you can buy outright. Typically, 
discounted or at full price. So if you're comfortable using QuickBooks in a cloud-based version, you can start cost-effectively by accepting the trial of one of the versions that are most likely to fit your needs. Now, something else important to note is this. If you're looking at QuickBooks Self-Employed, or you're looking at the Essentials, or you're looking at the Online Plus, you'll notice that if you want to track your inventory, that's going to be most effectively done using QuickBooks Online Plus. The other thing that you'll want to see is that if you have to prepare 1099 statements for contractors, again, that's going to be most effectively done using QuickBooks Online Plus. The other thing that you'll want to take note of is that QuickBooks Self-Employed is a totally different platform than QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Online Plus. Both Essentials as well as Plus operate on a small business system. The self-employed system is a different one and you will not be able to integrate these two sections. So you'll need to make a decision about which one is going to be best for you at the beginning. Welcome back. Now it's clear that QuickBooks Desire is for you to subscribe to their service over time as opposed to making the one-time purchase of their desktop software. There are some substantive differences that you'll want to be aware of. The most obvious is going to be that you're going to be able to work from your smartphone or from your PC using the cloud-based service as opposed to the desktop. You will not be tied to the file or the machine that you're working on. Also, you're going to be able to give access to an accountant to your online account that limits them in terms of what they can see but yet allows them to do the work they need to do. It's quite possible that all you really need are going to be these four things invoices, sales and expenses, manager accounts payable, and then your tax reports. If that's the case, you're going to have the same effect whether you use the desktop version or online version, and then you would pay one time for the desktop. Now the other thing you're going to want to be aware of is that with the online version that you see on the left hand side, that you can download your bank transactions, and you can do that automatically using the cloud-based version you're going to run into a charge if you choose to use the desktop version. So if you're currently a desktop user, most of the advertising that QuickBooks is doing is going to be to attempt to move you to the online version. Now, if you've not started using QuickBooks, you'll want to make your decision based on the services that you are going to need. Now, if indeed you have a desktop version and you need to move everything into the online version, you can do that there are steps to follow and it's all on the QuickBooks website. Basically, once you pay your fee, you'll be then importing your file from the desktop version into the new QuickBooks. So in closing, there are some advantages to using the cloud-based service and you'll note that QuickBooks is making it easier so that you will choose to subscribe over making the one-time payment. Welcome back. Now for the sake of this video, we are going to opt for the trial and we are going to try the plus version. We are going to sign up here and we are going to enter our password. We're being asked to choose the one-time offer. We're going to continue with the trial. And as we watch, QuickBooks will then go through a setup process of our account. We're going to be asked to give our business name. And if we've been using QuickBooks desktop, we can bring in our data at this point. We're then going to click Next. Now QuickBooks does have a wizard and you can check the ones that apply to you. And then you can click All Set. And once you do that, your QuickBooks Online will then be ready for some basic setup options. And then you can begin using the service to track your expenses as well as your revenue. Welcome back. We're now going to go to this gear so that we can go through some of the basic setup. And to do that, we're first going to click Account and Settings. And you'll see your identifying information in the company section. In terms of your billing and subscription, you'll be able to keep track here. Now your sales data, you'll need to customize this based on the business that you are doing and what you're selling and how you receive payment. 
You'll also want to customize the expenses section. And again, this is going to be determined based on how your business runs and how you operate. Now, in terms of the advanced settings, you're going to want to set this according to what you're doing with respect to taxes and your accountant. You do want to make sure that your currency is going to be set correctly. If you are going to have additional users, you're going to want to click this link. And in terms of the individual products and services you offer, you can enter those here, but we will be doing that in a separate video. Now, if you intend to import data from another accounting software program, you can do that in this tools area, especially if you're going to be starting with the dates that are in that data. And once you've completed those basics, you'll then be ready to start entering transactions. Now, one thing you're going to need to do is to pick a particular start date. And you'll need that start date as you start to connect your account, in particular your banking account, because you're going to need to reconstruct financial transactions going back to the beginning of your fiscal year if you want your records to be fully accurate. Welcome back. Now the minimum you're going to need in order to get started is you're going to need an account where you can receive funds or payments and or you're going to also need an account where you can make payments from. And you can do this automatically by connecting to your bank through QuickBooks or you can set up the account manually. What we're going to do is we're going to click the connect button. Now if you currently use PayPal, you can click PayPal or you can write in the name of your bank. Now if you primarily use PayPal, you can just click this link or if you have a specific bank, you can place the URL in this dialog box. QuickBooks will then connect to your account or to PayPal. You will then need to give permission You'll then need to write in your PayPal address. You'll then need to allow PayPal to connect your account to Intuit. Once you've done that, you'll then have your payment account set up with your QuickBooks account. You'll then click Next. You'll then determine where you want your PayPal transactions to be. You'll then click Next. And then you can determine when you want your PayPal transactions to start. And this will depend on how you're organizing your account. If you want to change the date, you can click this button and then you can begin the import on a certain date. Once you have it, you can then click Save. When you're ready, you can then click the Done button. Then your PayPal will then be connected to your QuickBooks account and you can begin working with the transactions that are already there. And once you've done that, you can begin to connect your accounts one at a time to your QuickBooks account. Once you have them, you'll then be able to begin accounting for the various payments you receive, as well as the various payments you're going to be making and then tracking inside of QuickBooks. Welcome back. Now, once you bring over the various payments accounts into your QuickBooks, what you're going to notice is that you have a balance, which is in blue, and that's what your bank is showing and then you have a balance in QuickBooks and QuickBooks is going to have a zero balance and then this 35 is going to represent the number of transactions that you need to verify are actually true and that need to be categorized inside of QuickBooks. Now again, you determined what the starting date was going to be. So for example, if you want to go back and you want to make sure that the only dates you're going to be using are going to be only one month or maybe even three versus the entire year, you can do that. Now what you'll need to do then, is you'll need to go through each and every one of these transactions and you'll need to verify them and you'll need to place them inside of the category where you want them. And so for each of these transactions, you're going to write in the description according to the way that you want it to be. You're going to determine the specific category where you want it. And so if you want to change the category, you're going to use this drop down menu or you're going to create your own category. And when you've accepted them all and you've categorized them all, your balance in QuickBooks will then match the balance in your bank. And then everything in QuickBooks is going to be correct and you can begin using it to account for your payments as well as your sales. Hello and welcome. Now in order to keep your account in sync, you can download the mobile application to your iOS device or your Android device. And what you're going to do is you're going to search for QuickBooks Online. 
Uh, you'll see the self-employed application in the mileage tracker. That is not the one that you're going to want to use. You're going to want to use the second one down, which is QuickBooks Accounting, and then you'll click Get. You'll then download the app to your mobile device. You'll then open the new application. Once you do that, you'll then sign in using your user ID and password that you just set up. You'll then be asked to verify your account. And then you'll be asked to enter your six digit authentication code. You'll then have your verification code that you'll enter. You'll then be asked to enter your mobile device number. Now for the sake of the video, we just skipped adding our mobile device number. You can choose whether or not to allow notifications. And then your mobile device will then be ready to sync with your online account. Welcome back. Now, as of the recording of this video, for the small business application of QuickBooks, there is no mileage tracking application available using your mobile device. That means then that unless you have the self-employed version of QuickBooks, you're going to need a third-party application. So what we're going to do is we're going to log back into QuickBooks. Once you're logged back in, you're going to go to the left side menu and you're going to click on this area that's called Apps. And what we're going to write in here is we're going to search for mileage tracking. Now you're going to be able to integrate several applications to your QuickBooks software. The one most popular is Expensify. There is a charge for Expensify, so for every member of your team, it's going to be $5 per active user per month. And you're using this application primarily for the mileage tracking capability. Everything else is going to be part of your QuickBooks software. So to get started, we're going to click Get App Now. We're then going to click Connect to your QuickBooks account. QuickBooks will then connect. And once you have Expensify connected to your QuickBooks account, what you'll need to do then is you'll then need to download the mobile application. And so you'll need to search for Expensify in your App Store. And then once you see it, you'll need to click Get. Expensify will then download to your mobile application. You'll then click Open. You'll then want to write in your QuickBooks login and password. Then in order to track your mileage for a trip, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click the plus button at the top. And what you can do is you can then manually create the distance or you can use the odometer. So for example, if we were to choose odometer, we would then put in our starting reading for our business trip. We then put in our ending reading for our business trip. And we would then click Save. Our trip is then automatically logged in on our Expensify application. Now, Expensify also gives you the capacity to take a digital image of your odometer. Now for the sake of this video, we are not going to take the camera image. However, it is available as you can see. And you can then determine how you are going to report this to your QuickBooks application depending on your entity as well as how you are handling mileage on your taxes. Welcome back. Now that we have our payment account set up, we can now begin accounting for payments made to us for products or services that we sell. So let's assume that you sold a service. And what we want to do first is to make sure that we have that service set up inside of our QuickBooks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sales category. We're then going to go to products and services. And we're going to set up a new product or service that we sell. So we're going to click this new button. We're then going to set up the product or service according to the category that it best fits. Now in this case, we're going to set up a service that we are selling. We're going to give that service a name and a category. And we're going to write in the category here. And because it's a new category, we're then going to save the category. We're going to leave this information ticked. I sold this product or service to my customer. 
we can then write this in so that it appears on sales forms. Now in this case, we're not going to write it in, we're going to write in our price. Now if we were purchasing part of the service from another vendor, we can tick this and then we can fill in the fact that we're going to be assigning a cost to that service. We're not going to do that in this case. What we're going to do now is we're just going to click save and close. So you'll notice now that we have a service available that we can sell at $797 to any of our customers. But let's assume then that we have a meeting with a customer and they make the upfront payment for our services. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this customer area. We're then going to select the customer. And although we have existing customers, we're going to create a new customer. In this case, we're just going to write in this customer's name. And then we're going to save the customer. Now we're going to create a new transaction for this customer. And to do that, we're going to go to this drop down arrow. And we're going to create a sales receipt since we have received payment from the customer. We click that button, that's going to bring us to the screen. We're then going to designate the service that we rendered to be paid. We're going to select this service. And you'll see then that the rate auto populates. For example, if we choose that we're going to state that we actually received two levels of the service, we can do that. Then the service will auto populate in this case. Now, when we do this, we need to determine how the customer is paying. And let's assume that that customer paid us with cash. What we would do then is we would say we're going to deposit that payment either to our bank or we can assume that they sent that payment to PayPal. We're going to say that we're going to deposit this to our bank. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click save. And you'll notice now that we have a receipt that has been saved. Now if we go back to our dashboard, what you're going to find are a couple of things. First, you're going to notice that your bank is going to reflect that it has a balance of $22, but yet in QuickBooks, we have accounted for the transaction, even though we have reconciled our bank to that transaction. And you'll notice here back on our bank page, we have the same thing. We have the transaction that we have noted that we've made the deposit, but again, we have not reconciled that electronically with our bank. So what we can do is we can click go to the register and you'll notice then that we have our receipt, we have our deposit made, and all we'll need to do then is we'll need to click this green button that'll reconcile our account to the deposit that's made. Now you want to make sure that this is going to be done once you know that the funds have been deposited and that they are going to be there and then available to you. Welcome back. Now we can also report transactions using our QuickBooks application. And so in this case, we're going to click on the QuickBooks app. We're now going to go back to our dashboard. And what you're going to see is that we can then click this plus button at the very bottom. And you're going to see there that we have a way of being able to create different transactions. In this case, we're going to create a sales receipt. And what we're going to do is we're going to select that sales receipt by customer. We're then going to click our customer. We're then going to choose the method. So we're going to click the method. In this case, we're going to say this customer is paying us in cash. And then we'll determine where the cash is going to go. In this case, we're going to say that cash is going to our bank. We're then going to add in a line item and we're going to call it a certain kind of consulting. We're then going to click add. Once we've done that, we can then save the transaction. Now, of course, if we want to, we can place a reference number there, but we're just going to go ahead and save the transaction. Once the transaction saves, we can then go back to our desktop. And we'll then see the additional amount reflected in our QuickBooks balance. And once again, we'll need to reconcile our bank balance to 
get these two totals to match. And you'll see them here on your banking screen. Welcome back. You can also pay a vendor manually other than those that come through on your statements. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the expenses area. But first, we're going to make sure that we have vendors set up. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new vendor. And one of the things that we can do here is we can give this individual a billing rate. What we can also do is give this individual an email address. And then we can save this individual as a vendor. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here at the bottom is we can track these payments for 1099 if that is needed. Now, in this case, we're not going to do that. So let's assume then that we make a payment to Richard Johnson. We're going to go inside of him as a vendor. And you're going to come to this screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to a new transaction. We're then going to write in here that this is going to be an expense. We're first going to determine where the funds are going to come from. Let's assume then that we're going to pay Richard cash. And we're going to pay it from our bank account. So we're going to have that here. So of course, what we're then going to do is we're going to assign this to a specific account. We're going to write in a description. Now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we just paid a flat fee. So we're going to write in here an amount. And then we're going to come down to the bottom and we're going to go to this arrow. And we're going to click Save and Close. Now what you'll notice then is that Richard has been paid $205 from our bank account. And you'll notice then a reduction in our QuickBook balance by that amount of $205. And you'll see that right here. You'll also see that as we write in our expenses that we have $205 of our expenses for this month associated with contractors. And so we can manually track our expenses both manually as well as those that come through on our statement when we reconcile them. Welcome back. We can also undertake the same process on our mobile device. What we'll need to do is to go inside of our QuickBooks app. We'll come down to the bottom and then we'll look for the plus. We'll click it and you'll notice right in the middle we can then click into an expense. You'll then see that we have a new expense. What we're going to do is first, we're going to determine how we paid for that expense. So in this case, we're going to say that we paid cash. And so we select other. We're then going to write in an amount. And then we're going to select an account that we're going to take this from. In this case, we're going to take it from our bank account, not from our PayPal account. We're then going to write in who we actually paid. And then we're going to write in what kind of expense. In other words, what category are we going to place this expense in? Once we write in any other identifying information, we can then click Save. QuickBooks will save our transaction. And then we have entered this expense into QuickBooks on our mobile device. Now we'll see the expense on our desktop. And what we can do when we are back at our desktop is we can enter and edit this transaction. And you'll notice here that because we declared other, there was no payment method. So we're now going to declare that this is going to be cash. What we're going to do now is we're going to click save. Our transaction is saved and now we can save it and close it. And our expenses now reflect the correct amount. One of the useful features inside of QuickBooks is that you can capture your receipts as soon as you get them. And you can do that by using your mobile device. And so as you spend and as you get receipts, one of the things that you can do is you can click the plus button. You can then click your expense button. And one thing you're going to notice right at the top is you're going to see the camera at the top left. What you're going to do is you're going to click that button. QuickBooks is going to then ask to access your camera. You're going to say OK. Then you're going to be asked if you want to take a photo or not. You're going to click Take Photo. QuickBooks is then going to access your camera. OK, and then what you're going to do is you're going to snap the picture. 
You'll then use the photo that you have. You'll then write in the amount that you actually spent. You'll designate how you paid for it. You'll then designate the account that you paid for it. And then you can write in who you actually paid. In this case, we're going to create a new vendor. We're going to write in the expense. And then once we have our expense, we can then click Save. And we've then captured our receipt into our QuickBooks system. Welcome back. What you can also do is organize your receipts so that you can associate them with specific expenses. Now let's assume that this expense happened and you received a PDF receipt. And yet you didn't have time to take a picture of it. And so what you need to do is you need to come to this expense after the fact. You need to update it with your PDF. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the expense. You're going to click the edit button. It's going to open up the expense and you're going to come down to the attachments. And what you're going to notice here is that you can drag and drop files or just click this icon. What we could do then is we can grab our receipt. And then our receipt will then become part of this expense. And so you can organize your receipts after the fact by going to the individual expense, dragging and dropping the receipt into this area. Welcome back. Now we've seen a manual way of entering new customers into your QuickBooks system. Another way of entering those customers is going to be when you are reconciling your bank transactions or your PayPal transactions or your payee transactions. And you can do that when you have sales but yet no distinct customer information. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go inside of your bank register when you are reconciling and you're going to click inside of that transaction. And what you're going to do here is you're then going to click edit. We get to the screen, we're then going to determine who we received this money from. We're then going to go inside of here, and then you're going to notice that we have a drop down with all of our customers. However, what we also have here is we have a plus button. We're going to click add new. And then we're going to write our customer in here. We can write in any identifying information. We can put as much detail in as we'd like. And then we're going to click save. Once we've done that, we can then save the transaction. And you'll notice here that our new customer is now in the list with all of our other customers. Welcome back. Now, one of the ways that you can be paid by someone that you're doing a service for is you can invoice them once you've completed the work. And QuickBooks will allow you to customize an invoice and then send it to the individual by email. And you'll see here in this screen that we have, which has a wizard that will take you through the process. Now QuickBooks will give you control over the look of your invoice. You can place your colors, you can change the font, you can even add your logo in here to do what you want it to do. You can change the content of your invoice just by clicking on the inside writing in what you want it to be. You can determine what your invoice email is going to say to the individual when they receive it. What you can also do is you can allow your customer to pay online. So in other words, they're going to receive the invoice online. You can have them pay online and then everything is taken care of inside of QuickBooks. Now, for some reason you don't see the wizard, you can go to the sales area you can then go to invoices. And you'll see here in the tip area at the very bottom, you, know, you get a link where you can customize your invoices. So in this case, we're going to click send your first invoice. Now again, if you want to be set up so that your customer can pay you online, you can do that through QuickBooks. Otherwise, what you can do for the invoice is you can choose the customer. You can place their email in the box. You can determine the terms on which they need to pay you. And then you can determine the due date. You can then indicate when the service was actually performed. 
you can determine what the service was, and you can write in the actual description. What you can do also is you can determine whether or not this is going to be a recurring situation or not. You can then make this a recurring invoice so that it goes out at the same time every month. What we're going to do now is we're going to click Save, and then we're going to click Save and Send. Then your email will be sent along with your invoice to the customer. And once again, we did not set up for online payments, so they will need to pay you manually. Welcome back. Now let's assume now that the individual that you sent the invoice to has paid you. They didn't pay you online, they decided to give you cash. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our sales area. We're then going to go to the invoices. What you're going to notice then is that we have our outstanding invoices here on this page. And what we're going to do now is we're going to receive payment. So we're going to click receive payment. And we're going to determine the payment method. We're going to say they paid us in cash. We're then going to deposit it into our bank, although we have the option of depositing it into our other account. In this case, we're going to deposit it into our bank. I'm going to then close out this payment. This is the case where if you wanted to attach something, you wanted to take a picture of something and enclose this inside of the invoice or the payment, you could do that. Once this is done, you can then close out this payment at invoice. We're going to click Save and Send. And what we're going to do now is we're going to send a receipt to the individual that they have now paid. What we're going to do now is we're just going to click Send and Close. Then the $250 will be deposited, the invoice has been accounted for, and our bank will now reflect the new balance. Again, you're going to notice that QuickBooks says our bank balance is $22 and yet our ending balance is something different. These two are not going to match until we go through the reconcilement process. Now when or if we get an invoice from a vendor, what we're going to do inside of QuickBooks is we're going to enter that vendor inside of QuickBooks. So we're going to click here, New Vendor, and we're going to write in their identifying information. Now, when we are entering this individual in or their company, we can write in an opening balance when we set up their account. So in other words, we can determine that this individual is someone that we already owe a certain amount to. We're then going to set the individual up and then click Save. Our vendor then has a balance of 197. So let's assume then that we have other work that we're going to have this company do for us. So we're going to go inside of their screen right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to write in a new transaction. And we're going to call this a bill. We're going to determine what the terms are. And we're going to determine what account this should represent. We're going to write in our description. And then we're going to write in the amount that the invoice is for. Now, just as we set up, just as we set up so that we can be paid by QuickBooks, we can also pay our bills directly through QuickBooks if we want to go through the setup process. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to close out of this bill area. Now we're going to notice now that we have a bill for $964, which includes the new invoice of $767. You'll also see the bill in our expense transactions. Welcome back. Now if we go back to our expenses and we were to go to our vendors, if you recall, we owe one vendor for more than one invoice. If we go in, we notice that this total is going to be $964. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay this vendor, but we're going to pay this vendor more than the $767, but less than $964. And what we're going to do first is we're going to pay the $197, which was the previous balance. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click either of the Make Payment buttons. And that's going to bring us to this screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to partially pay the second bill. So in this case, 
we're going to pay less than the full payment. We're going to make the payment from our bank account. And then we're going to click Save and New. You'll note then that when we come back to this vendor's account, we still have a balance of $130. However, we've paid on these invoices and we're tracking the balance inside of our QuickBooks. Welcome back. We have now walked through all of the basics of getting set up on QuickBooks. You've seen now how to set up payment accounts for your bank or PayPal. You can use the same structure in order to set up credit cards or any other payment account. We've seen how to track sales, those you enter manually or those that come over through your bank and those that you have to edit in order to change. We've walked through how to account for expenses, those that you spend, those that you need receipts for, as well as those that you pay by invoice. We have set up and sent invoices and we've also set up customers that we are going to be working with. On the other side, we've also set up our vendors in order to work with them. We've also walked through the process of tracking mileage using the third-party app Expensify. And we've also walked through the process of using the QuickBooks mobile application. We've also walked through the process of working with receipts, getting them categorized and organized. And we've walked through the basics of each plan so that you can determine which one is going to be best for your needs. And most importantly, we discuss rules of thumb that you can use before you set up your QuickBooks application. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.